Thank you, Mary, for playing for us tonight. It's good to be here tonight and good to have everyone with us. Uh, we will um, um, go over just a few, a few announcements here. Um, uh, before we get started, uh, October the 4th at 2 p.m., um, this will be for the uh, annual Blunt County uh, Prayer Chain for Life. Uh, don't forget that if you can, if you can come out for that, October the 4th at 2 p.m. Uh, don't forget the <coughs> National Day of Prayer. that will be coming up Saturday, September the 26th. Um, the East Tennessee Day of Prayer will be that day from 10 until noon. And then the March, the Blunt County Prayer March will start at noon this coming Saturday. So uh, please keep those uh, in your on your calendar and in your mind, okay? Um, don't forget services this weekend, Sunday morning, Sunday night. So you'll be praying about those. Is there any other announcements? Don't forget the Golden State offering this month. I, I I keep forgetting that, so don't forget that as well. Anyone? Any other? The, uh, I was late. Sorry. Did you mention the fall Easter egg hunt? No. A fall Easter egg hunt this Sunday evening from six to seven p.m. Okay. You need to bring a basket and eggs but don't have to have anything in your eggs, okay? Refreshments will be provided. It's gonna be outside. Okay. This Sunday. This Sunday. Sunday night from six until seven. Uh, it'll be the- Eggs, is that what you said? Bring empty eggs, yes. Will be the fall Easter egg hunt for uh, the kids uh, because we couldn't do it at Easter. Uh, bring a basket and eggs with no candy and there will be everything will be outside so uh, be some refreshments for that so don't forget that this coming Sunday night so um, any other announcements our nation yes remember our nation in our prayers uh, remember the election in our prayers as well it's coming up soon uh, we as a church and as a Christian we need to be praying about that uh, any other Announcements. Prayer announcements right now, Jake. We are now. We are now. <laughs> One of my best friends in high school, her, I think she called him her nephew or great nephew. He was um, driving and he came upon some of the protesters. Well, uh, one of the protesters ended up having a gun. I think it was a lady. Well, he also had a gun, so he held his up as well. And uh, somehow or other, they got hold of his name and address and whatever. And ever since that incident, nobody was hurt, but ever since that incident, he was fired from his job because of it. I don't know how that has anything to do with it. But, well, part of it was with his name and address and phone number, they started calling his employers. His, they just started calling about him. And he's gone through tremendous harassment and doesn't seem to be an end of it to it. Um, it's scary times we live in. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and this one sort of hit close to home. Well, I mean, they don't live here. They live in, in Atlanta area, but still yet. I still remember this. Remember me, I have a decision to make. Uh, when I go back to the doctor on the 12th, um, I stand a good chance of being put on a transplant list. That's kind of a scary thought too, so. Yes, mm -hmm. remember Mary's request. Prayer. Yes, we could. Yes, we could. We were praying for that last year. Any other prayer? Uh, 
Stephanie requested prayer Sunday for Donnie Morton. Remember Donnie and his family in your prayers? A uh, good Christian man that got COVID and been on the ventilator. And not doing good. Uh, remember him and his family. Yes. Remember Donnie Morton and Alvin Baldwin in your prayers. The grandfather of the little baby that was we prayed and prayed about because he was told that his parents were told that basically he would die when he was born, and he has not. He'll be a year old. And he'll soon. be a year old soon. And he's beautiful little boy. He still has the what with the condition. I don't remember what it's called. Do you, Bobby? No. And it, it just means his chest is really too small and doesn't grow like a normal chest. But um, so he still has that condition. But he's a beautiful little boy and basically following all the milestones of a child you know he's walking and talking and doing everything a basically year old kid should do yes. alvin is the grandfather of that baby yes. do remember this family in your prayers i'm thankful that we have a god we can pray to tonight he hears our prayers and uh, this is a, re a result of unanswered prayer um, any other requests or praises? A man that had the motorcycle wreck, he got COVID, and then he's, uh, he's better. He, I can't believe it. And then he's uh, going to Patricia Neal as soon as they have a room open. So it's, that family needs prayer, and financially they're just ruined. Two small children. Continue to remember this. Anyone else? having surgery. Yeah, remember Gail, she's having surgery tomorrow. So do remember her and Howard in your prayers. Anyone else? JD and Brenda lately. Yeah, they're doing okay, so they're doing good. Doing good. Well, I hadn't seen them in a couple of weeks, so I didn't know. Yeah, they don't get out. No. JD's doing real good, he said. Mm -hmm. Matt, would you lead us in prayer, please? Lord, I want to thank you for the opportunity to come out to your house tonight. I want to thank you for uh, the blessing that you give for me, God. I want to ask that you be with each request that was made. I know that you have uh, an answer for it, Lord. Uh, I want to ask that you be with Alan and see that uh, delivers your word tonight, God. Just let us have open minds and open hearts to receive your word. Uh, just help us that as we go, Lord, throughout, uh, throughout our day tomorrow and the rest of the week, that we'd be a lot for you. Uh, to others that don't know you. Uh, thank you again for the blessing that you've given me and all the things I ask in your name. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles tonight and you want to follow along with us, let's turn to Matthew chapter 11 tonight. And uh, Matthew chapter 11. Just remember Jimmy and Margaret in your prayers. I I talked to Jimmy uh, the other day, and he said he, he hopes he's on the he's getting better, and uh, said he felt like it was the flu shot that may have caused a lot of his problems. So so do remember Jimmy and Margaret in your prayers too. Uh, Matthew chapter eleven, and I want to share with you this scripture and a thought that. Uh, the Lord's laid on our heart uh, here this week while we were studying. And uh, uh, so we're going to, I want to back up and we'll read, start reading in verse 25 and we'll read down through verse 30. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight, all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest uh, unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer again tonight. Thanking you, Lord, for uh, this appointed time that you've given us, Lord, to gather together to worship you here tonight. Lord, we pray, God, that uh, most important prayer tonight, Lord, if there's anyone that uh, is listening or watching God from wherever they may be that is lost, and God, they've never put their faith and trust in you, Lord, we just pray that, uh, God, that uh, through your conviction conviction in their life, uh, and Lord, through uh, them confessing you that they would come and be saved, Lord, as we pray tonight, I know that uh, Lord, uh, at times all of us seem like there's uh, we're carrying loads or carrying things on us, God, that gets us weighed down and uh, that load gets heavy at times. Lord, I just pray that, uh, Lord, did you just help us uh, this week and help us with this scripture tonight. Let it be a, a help unto all of us, Lord. Lord, we just want to praise you for all the answered prayers and blessings, God, that you continuously uh, pour out upon us, Lord. Uh, we we bring those to you in prayer tonight, Lord, that are unable to be here, those that are watching from home, and uh, we lift their needs up to you. And Lord, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I, I've talked about this a few times, uh, maybe since I've been here. Um, I've probably mentioned it once or twice, but uh, wherever I go, I've got a backpack that I carry with me. And uh, I, I've... I don't know if I've told you this or not, but at times, you know, that thing, it's a, it's a collection. It just collects everything, okay? So I'm, I'm out of town last week, and uh, I'm up in Ohio, and I kind of hurt my back a little bit, and I put that backpack on, and man, that thing just, it went from feeling like 50 pounds to 500 pounds. So I got to digging in that thing, and you know what? I was carrying a lot of stuff in there that I shouldn't have been carrying, and things I hadn't seen in a year, so it was time to unload that thing and get get the get the burden of that thing uh, back down to, uh, I guess what I would call normal. So uh, you know I have to do that from time to time because uh, it gets so heavy you just can't carry it around and um, it, it makes doesn't make things easy. But I was thinking of this scripture uh, this week and uh, when the Lord brought that back to my mind and. I begin to look at it and begin to pray about it. And we see that, uh, you know, Jesus is speaking uh, unto his apostles and those that are following him. And, uh, you know, he tells them in verse uh, 28, he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, there's times that we we need rest. Uh, there's times that the body, it needs to uh, it has to sleep, it has to recover from uh, the use and the grind that it goes through. Uh, you know, so you have to do that daily, okay? Uh, I know people that can stay up a day or two at a time, and, uh, you know, they're, they're not doing themselves any favor. They need, their body needs to rest. I also believe that spiritually, you know, uh, a person needs to rest as well. Uh, so there, there is spiritual rest that we get uh, from the Lord. But when you think about the, uh, the circumstances uh, in the context of what Jesus is talking to them, he's speaking unto them, and uh, he's making it into the fact where he says, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Uh, you know, when you think about those things, uh, we, uh, we tend to... Uh, classify those as burdens, burdens being the uh, part that we carry with us on a daily basis. Uh, you know, it, it, we carry things around with us today. Uh, we don't just carry our, our physical body, uh, not just uh, our car keys or anything like that, but we carry things around us uh, of things that we think about, things that we worry about. Uh, it, it's very easy in the year 2020, uh, for people to carry around extra burdens because of sickness, uh, COVID, uh, because of uh, persecutions. We've heard that tonight because of 
uh, people losing jobs and people being in the hospitalized and uh, you know all kinds of things just seem to come upon us and and those things can tend to get you down at times and I know that uh, um, all of us uh, there's times that we go through those things and you know what if it, if it was up to us or if it was up to me we'd never go through those things but that's not the way it works uh, but when I read this scripture and I've read this many times in my life and I've preached out of this scripture before, but uh, in studying, I found a few things that I'd never seen before. And like I told you Sunday, it just it brought excitement to me because I hadn't thought about it in that context before. And when you look in the scriptures and uh, Jesus is telling them, he said, uh, those that are, are that, that labor and those that are heavy, late, heavy laden, he said, I will give you rest. And then notice in verse 29, he says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He says, For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest in your souls. Now, I, we all know what a yoke is, or at least I thought I knew what one was. Uh, we've seen them, uh, I guess, as a kid. I, I may have seen one, I don't know. I've seen them in movies, and I've seen... Uh, pictures you you look online for a yoke uh, and we know that it's a piece of wood and uh, it's used to tie uh, two oxen together or two mules together uh, and you know that's the picture that I've always had in my mind and uh, you know uh, I've seen preachers before in sermons they'll, they'll they'll borrow somebody's yoke and they'll bring it in and they'll use it as a display and and that's what I've always seen and what I've always noticed about that yoke. But what I didn't really understand was uh, in that day and time when, uh, you know, Jesus is speaking unto them. He's giving them an example that they can relate to, something that they can grasp, something that they see and they know how it's done. And, and what I come to find out is, is that when, when a, a, I guess you call it a farmer or, or whatever his trade was titled then, or when he had a, a pair of oxen or mules or whatever uh, that team was that he was putting together, you know, those mules and those oxen are just like you and I tonight. They're, it's not a one size fit all. They're, they come in different sizes. They come in different heights. Uh, they come in different widths. They, uh, you know, their shoulders may be farther back. Their neck may be farther long. And it was amazing to me that uh, what that, uh, I guess if you call it a craftsperson would do was uh, he would take a, a new beam of wood and he would, he would slowly carve out uh, the, the impression of that yoke and he would custom fit it uh, to that, that team of mules or oxen. And you know what, that brought, that just, it just brought excitement me, to me because, you know what, it was made for that pair. It was made to bring them together. And you know, I've never put any type of thought in that before. And you know, they said the one thing that, that you had to realize is that yoke had to fit perfectly. And it fit perfect, perfectly under that team so that, that it, was, it, would, it wouldn't cause... Uh, 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 to rub or to, or to injure the animals or, what, or whatever it may be. And then it said that the distance, the space between uh, the two animals and that, they had to be far enough apart so that they didn't injure one another. I've never thought about that. Then it said they couldn't be too far apart, or yet when they pulled together, uh, they would not pull evenly. They would, one would have to work harder than the other. And that was amazing to me, I have all the thought and the detail that went in that yoke to join uh, them together. Now, if you think about that for just a moment, think about the thought and think about the process that God went through when He joined you and I under His Son, Jesus. Now, you know, that's a match that, that he only heaven can make today. I, I've seen couples and I've, I've heard people that are married and say, uh, you know what, they talk about how... 
a, a good fit that they are to each, to each other and how they complement each other in their marriage and in their relationship. And, and they, they'll tell you that, you know, it was God that worked it out and brought them two together. And there's no doubt, I believe God does those things. But when God paired us up to His Son Jesus in that, listen, it was perfect. It was a, a perfect fit. And, and when you think about this for a moment, uh, the only way, the, I've never, I've never, been in a yoke. I don't want to be in a yoke. Uh, my pulling days are over. But the only thing that I could come up with, that I could relate with, was being back in high school during football. And the only thing they had, they had a, a some of you have seen those things uh, out in the practice field. Some of you may have hit a few of them in that. Uh, but they, it's a sled. And what it is, they'll take the five linemen and they'll push that sled to work them out. And, and you know, I can remember if you were the only one that hit that sled, it, you could just barely move it. But yet, if all five hit that thing at the same time, you know what I what I come to my memory? It was so easy to move. It was like you wasn't even moving it yourself. Uh, it felt like you was not putting any effort in it at all. And I was thinking about this. You know that yoke that Jesus is talking about when we are coupled and joined with Him. You know uh, when you think about that, you say, preacher, He was going to bring us rest. Uh, listen, there's things in our lives that you know what we're going to go through. There's things in our lives we have to go through. I believe tonight there's things in our life that Jesus shields us from. I believe there's things that, that He protects us from. But what I want you to remember and what I want you to understand and what Jesus is saying here is even though you've got a load, of head of, a load ahead of you, you are not alone. Now, now that brought excitement to me because you know what? We've all been through things I'm, and we're all going to go through things at some time in our lives. But you remember, I'm, uh, Jesus said this. He said, for my yoke, is easy and my burden is light. Uh, and the only way that I could remember and the only way I could think about that is you know what made that pushing that sled in football practice the hardest thing was just getting it to go. But after it moved uh, it was so easy. And you know what? There's times in my life if I just get to that point uh, and push it once it starts going it's easy to move. Uh, and remember uh, that yoke that coupling there you know what? It was made for you and Jesus. Um, not for you and anyone else. Not for you and nobody else. But you and Jesus. Now I believe as a church and as a body of Christ uh, when one hurts we all hurt. Uh, when one rejoices we all rejoice. Uh, because there's one body. Uh, but remember there's times in our lives that Jesus is the only one that can help us. Uh, he's the only one that can touch our heart. Uh, he's the only one that can turn things around. Uh, and I I was thinking about this, uh, uh, that when that when that sculptor would sculpt out that piece of wood, uh, it was made for a team. Uh, you know who I'm teamed with tonight? Uh, I'm teamed with Jesus. You know what? He's the best. Uh, he's undefeated, uh, uh, Brother Mac. He's never, he's never had to stop. Uh, he's never needed a water break. Uh, he's never needed to rest in that. Uh, uh, there's been times in my life I've needed a water break. Uh, there's been times in my life I've needed to rest. Uh, uh, but Jesus was always ready. Now, I thought about this. When you think about this, uh, these are some thoughts uh, that I wrote down when, as I studied this week. His power is more than sufficient to lift the weight or help us uh, through what we're going through. It's more than sufficient. Think about this. There's a song, I, 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 I meant to look the page up and it completely slipped my mind a minute ago. Uh, but there's a song in the Bible, and we've sung it here at the church, uh, or in the, uh, in, in the hymnal and that, and we've sung it at church. Uh, and, and it says, pardon, there was multiplied to me, there my burdened soul 
found liberty at Calvary. Now, you want you to think about that. Um, the writer that wrote that song, you know what? There's been times in his life he'd been burdened down. Uh, there's been times in his life uh, of when he was heavy laden. But you know what he come to find out? Uh, there's, those burdens get easy. Uh, uh, that, that load gets a lot lighter when we get around Jesus. Now, think about this um, for just a moment. Uh, uh, that 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 fit uh, yoked together is a connection between uh, the team. You know what that is tonight? That's our connection between us and Jesus. Uh, you say, preacher, how are you connected uh, to Jesus tonight? Uh, first of all, God is my heavenly Father. Uh, and you know what? I'm a joint heir. So I'm blood related to Jesus. Amen. He's my elder brother, okay? Uh, but notice this. I'm also filled with the comforter of God which is the spirit of God and that's part of the trinity so you know that connection there is un breakable. Huh? It cannot be broken. Huh? Satan cannot break that connection. Huh? I was showing Kyle the other day on I like watching the TV show How It's Made. Huh? And you know that because they, they've got machines and they just make all kinds of things. And I said, Kyle, I said, look there. I said, they're making a chain. Huh? And he's looking at it and he was watching it and, and how they'd take that metal and they'd form it around and they'd loop it together and then they would weld it. And he said, what are they doing? I said, he's welding the joint together so that it's solid uh, so that it can't be broken uh, and then they took the chain and they ran it through an induction coil and they got it red hot uh, and dropped it in water and he said what are they doing there I, I said they're strengthening the chain so that it can carry the load uh, listen uh, uh, that, you say preacher why do they do that uh, it's so that chain won't break under load uh, listen uh, uh, Jesus has never been broke uh, He's never listened. Huh? He's never failed. Huh? He's never dropped a load. Huh? He's never slipped. Huh? Have you ever slipped in your life? Huh? Have you ever tried to push something or take off? Huh? And your feet slip under and you fall down and bust up all real bad? I've done it several times. Huh? Jesus has never slipped. Now notice this. He said, and ye shall find rest under your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 3. In verse 5, a friend of mine, he, he quotes this verse almost all, always. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thy own understanding. So if you're leaning not on your understanding, who do you lean on? Everybody has to lean on something. I have to prop myself up most of the time just to get relief from my back hurting. Anywhere I go, any plan I go, I'll, I'll find something to lean on. And what that does, it brings relief, okay? So we all have ways that we lean on something. But he said, lean not on your own understanding, but lean on Him. If we can trust anybody today, it's Jesus. You know, you can't trust the media. You can't, tr you can't trust politicians. Hey, I don't care who's in office. You can't trust them, okay? They're going to do whatever they want to do. I'm not, hey, I'm not trying to get into that. But you can trust Jesus. Amen. Because you know what? He's never lied. He's never let me down. Let's go back for just a moment. The key word. I underlined this and put explanation points beside it. The key to all of this. And I miss this a lot of times. I'm the world's worst. I've told you this. I'm the world's worst. I'll, I'll pray about something and I'll lay it down. And as soon as I get up, I'm reaching behind me and I'm grabbing it, pulling it back, Brother Mike, and sticking it back in my pocket. The key to all of this, we've got to go to Him. He even stated it. He said, come unto me. 
Come unto me. The key to the everything is going to him. I'm glad I've got somebody tonight I can go to. Okay? You know what? There was a time in my life I didn't have anybody I could go to. Now, I don't get me wrong. I had my parents. I had, had my wife. But they was, they was points. They was parts of my life they couldn't help me with. Okay? But I'm glad I found somebody that could. You know what? If, if, you never get, if you get nothing out of this sermon tonight, remember this. You've got somebody to go to. You're going, hey, you're not going to somebody that's going to judge you. You're going to somebody that loves you. You're going to somebody that laid his life down. I always, I always have to, I, I, this is burned in my mind. They didn't take his life, he laid it down. And then he took it up again. Let us pray tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer, Lord, tonight, thanking you, Lord, for your blessings. Thanking you, Lord, for answer prayers, God, that you've given us. Lord, we thank you tonight for that connection that we have that was specifically made. It was specifically fitted between us and you. Lord, I'm so thankful that when I take a step forward, I can always... I can always know and I'm always rest assured, Lord, you're right there with me. Lord, as we pray tonight, I know that at times uh, we are all carry loads, we all carry burdens, we all carry things in our lives. Lord, sometimes we just have to keep marching on and just keep carrying and keep pushing and keep going. But Lord, we, we know that you're always there. And Lord, I'm so thankful tonight that there's a load that you carry, Lord, that, 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 I, that I, I'm unable to carry. Lord, I know there's times in my life that, God, you've picked me up and you've dusted me back off and got me going straight again. And I'm thankful for that, Lord, tonight. Lord, as we pray tonight, may that if anyone that's listening or anyone that may watch this service later on in life, Lord, may, maybe they don't know you. Maybe they've never been saved. Lord, maybe they don't have that connection uh, between them and you lord i just pray that this this sermon and uh, would just touch their heart and life and help them realize the change that needs to take place lord we thank you for everything god we give you praise and thanks in jesus name amen and don't forget uh services this weekend uh don't forget the uh the announcements we made preaching on sunday morning starting at uh 10 30 so you don't forget that and then the uh, fall Easter egg for the kids will be Sunday night from 6 to 7, so don't forget that. And don't forget to pray one for another. Um, you know, I've not said this in a long time, um, but you know, the Lord has really, truly blessed our church. Uh, we've had visitors coming. Uh, you know, invite someone to church. Uh, you know, they, you never know. They may come one time, they may get hooked and stay here. That'll be all right, too. Lord knows what they need, okay? And, you know, we keep praying one for another. Keep praying. You know, I tell you, God's really put his hedge around our church, okay? Knock on wood, we've not had anybody sick, and I don't want nobody sick, okay? But I believe God has really hedged our church, and I'm thankful for that tonight. Don't forget those this weekend. Good night, and God bless.